In this video, I want to talk about toxins and detoxification. Too often in this world, people start referring to toxins and you need to detoxify and you need to do all these things. And these words are used very loosely and people are confused by them and they think they're that they need to do certain things in order to detoxify. And they think that if they avoid these things, they will never be toxic. But the truth is that toxins are everywhere, including inside of us. Our own body makes toxins that must be gotten rid of. And our own body uses these same, de same detoxification processes to get rid of some of our own toxins that it used to get rid of Monsanto's chemicals and Roundup and herbicides and pesticides and all those things. So what I'm gonna to do today is go through the generic, what is a toxin? What are the different categories, both biological and environmental? And then moreover, how are these things gotten rid of? Now this will be a very basic cursory understanding of the topic. And then what I will do in my future and subsequent videos is I'll go through each one and talk about it in a little more detail and, and expand upon these, these things. So don't look at this as the all inclusive. This is the 10,000 foot overview of toxins and detoxification. So first of all, I want to start off with the top category, which is the biological toxins versus the environmental toxins. So biological toxins, they've been here since the dawn of dinosaurs and whatever you want to believe is that the biological things are organisms and they are alive and they are growing. Okay. The environmental stuff is more of the modern industrial things that we may be exposed to today, the chemicals and the heavy metals and stuff. Now, of course, the paleolithic people were exposed to some of these environmental toxins as well, but not nearly as much. This main category has come into play ever since the modernization of man and industrialization and all of the, the chemicals and things that we've been creating. So I'm going to start all the way over here. And what is the first toxin that you see? Human. Now, humans, we make our own toxins, but quite frankly, toxic relationships can be just as bad as any toxic out there. So I don't mean this to mean other humans are toxic to you. I mean, your own body makes toxins. You breathe out, you poop, you sweat, you um, get rid of toxins in multiple ways. And why did you create those systems? Why did the body create those systems of detoxification? Because your own body makes toxins. So we breathe out CO2. CO2 is a toxic byproduct for us. If you hold your breath, you will feel like you are dying because that toxic byproduct begins accumulating. So it is very important that we're managing our own toxins because if you're not managing your own toxins, you cannot make energy. So I've used this metaphor in other videos where if you cannot detoxify, you cannot make energy. The metaphor is simple. If you have a car and you put a sock in the exhaust pipe or grapefruit or whatever you want to put in the exhaust pipe, if the car cannot detoxify its exhaust, it will eventually break down and not make energy. You are the same way. You must poop every day. You must sweat regularly and you must breathe, of course. So our own human body makes toxins. Everything that it makes must be destroyed. It doesn't matter what it is. Everything your body makes must be destroyed. The example I love to use the most is estrogen. Estrogen goes through the same phase one and phase two detoxification pathways, also known as methylation and glutathione, that regular toxins do. When we're talking about these chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, all that stuff, goes through the same exact pathways. So your own human body makes toxins. Don't forget about that. The second line of toxins in the biological world is what I'll call mucosal surfaces. And these mucosal surfaces is basically anything that makes slime, drool, intestinal mucus, snot, ears, lungs, coughing, whatever. Any of your mucosal surfaces, basically the wet areas of your body, I left uh, the genitals out, but the sinuses and lungs is a big category for the mucosal surfaces as far as where you can harbor uh, biological toxins. And by biological toxin in, in this category, we're really referring to bacteria, fungus, and yeast. And so in your sinus and lungs, you can have mycoplasma, you can have pneumonias, you can have strep, you can have all kinds of things going on in those sinus and lung categories. Next is on the list is mouth and teeth. How frequently forget about in medicine how the dental um, health of your body affects everything. It's a well-known fact that if you have dental decay and gingivitis, that you have earlier heart attacks and strokes, you have more autoimmunity. All this chronic inflammation that's happening in your mouth from either a bad root canal or uh, heavy metal fillings, amalgam fillings, or whatever biofilm disruption you may have in there, those things are creating constant biological toxins that your body must detoxify. And in the metaphor of a boat, and you've constantly got leaks in your boat, you've got to be pay bailing out this water that's leaking in. And so if you have too many toxins coming in, there's only so fast you can bail water. Your body's creating toxins. You've got dental infection creating toxins. And we haven't even gotten into the other ones. 
And then the size of the bucket is determined on how quickly you can detoxify. The next section on the mucosal surfaces is the gut. This is the biggest one, and it should be written in big, bold, and exclamation points and stars and all that, because you can harbor so many things in your gut, whether it be bacterial overgrowth, yeast and fungus overgrowth, parasites, numerous things can grow in your gut and create problems for you every day. There's more and more studies coming about out about the gut health and how important it is. One of the most fascinating ones lately that kind of blew my mind was that they were able to prove that a healthy bacteria in the presence of bad bacteria or bad fungus actually makes a toxin. I believe it was called polysaccharide A, I forget which um, bacteria it was, but there's so little we know about the gut. So the most important thing is to feed the gut very good nutrients, remove any trigger foods like gluten and dairy are the two most common ones. And then of course, get rid of or weed out the bad guys that are in there, the bacteria, the, the fungus, the clostridia, whatever it may be. I made another video called the biofilm video, so you can go and look at that on some of the processes that we utilize in our office in order to restore the, the microbiome. So I could talk all day about the gut as everyone knows, but um, we'll save that for another time, right, in my other videos. The next big category in the biological toxins is mold. Now I ask nearly every patient that comes into my practice what mold exposures they've had. And some understand that they do actually have a mold exposure. Some are currently living in mold and they're taping it off in their house, hoping it doesn't get them. Um, that didn't work, by the way. But mold is literally everywhere. And whether you think you're exposed to it or not, you have been exposed to it. It's just a matter of how much and where and for how long. So the, the, the this can, all of these things can be tested by the way. So if you have mold, that mold is collecting inside of your body. Your The mold toxins are, are microscopic little particles and they stick to your DNA, they stick to your cell walls where they're called mold adducts where they um, they stick to you. And so um, these, these mold toxins, the same metaphor, if you're on the boat and the boat is filling up with water and you're trying to bail out as much water as you can, if you're living in mold and you're collecting those mycotoxins, all of a sudden you can't focus on your human toxins. And if you can't focus on your human toxins, guess what? Your body starts shutting down its mitochondria. Start shutting down its mitochondria, that's what makes energy. If you stop making energy, guess what? Now you have brain fog, you have fatigue, your uh, heart's doesn't work so well, your liver detoxification process is slowed down, something's got to give. You don't want to die and your body doesn't either, so it puts in defense mechanisms and it sacrifices where it can. So mold is the big hidden thing that most people don't know they're exposed to. This is an easy, easy test that you can do. You can do it in the urine. Um, it's very difficult to find it in the home many times, but if there's an old water leak or something that you've neglected or maybe didn't, didn't think got fixed entirely, it's time to go investigate if you're suffering from any of those chronic conditions or autoimmunity. So the big category that we work with first in my office as far as functional medicine is concerned is we work on the biological toxins because all these other things are terrible and, and bad and all that. But the first way to start eliminating these is just to eliminate your exposure. So eating organic foods, trying not to drink dirty water, eating dirty food and exposing yourself to these things. But this is the number one. Without your own biological toxins flowing and getting detoxified, you are not going to be able to get rid of the environmental toxins very well. So we always start with the gut first, cleaning out the sinuses and mouth and teeth and, and mold and human toxins all that at the same time before we start moving into the environmental toxins. So let's shift gears a little bit to the environmental toxin section. And what you see here is this, this list is by no means comprehensive. I mean, I could talk all afternoon on the environmental toxins that, that we're exposed to on a daily basis, but I wanna break it down into two main simple categories of environmental toxins. One is the chemicals. So the environmental chemicals that are created in, in the industrial environment, I've listed a few, pesticides, herbicides, plastics, Teflon, VOCs, petrochemicals. Petrochemicals just means anything that's involved in the petroleum process of making chemicals. And there are thousands of metabolites. And if you don't believe they're in your water, then you should get it tested. So um, the, the, the millions of chemicals that have been created and grandfathered into our society, as far as the government is concerned, as, as safe before we started measuring it, um, they're, they're, they're all over the place. So start eliminating your chemical exposure wherever you can. I already mentioned a few, of course, organic foods when possible. Look up the dirty dozen list if you don't know what that is. That means those are definitely the 12 foods you want to eat organic all the time. The ones that are um, not on the dirty dozen, maybe you can skip and, and save money by buying regular. And then they have the clean 15 list. This is published by the EWG. The clean 15 list says, hey, you never have to buy these organic because they're relatively um, clean at, at, as non-organic. So start limiting your chemicals in your food and your water by having a water filter or putting a, a 
whole in-house water filter, like a water softener on your house, because people always think about the drinking water, but don't forget about the showering, the bathing, the washing your hands, the washing your dishes and all those. That's the same chemicals that are going to be on your plates and your forks and your knives and bathing your children, bathing yourself and whatnot. So don't forget, you get your, your skin is one of your largest organs, so you can get a lot of accumulation through that, not just through your drinking water. And then the last and questionably most important environmental toxin is heavy metals. So heavy metals frequently gets a lot of attention, especially in the chelation world and all the things that go along with that with the atherosclerosis reversal, the potential dangers of chelation and all that. But heavy metals are a particular problem because our body's not very good at getting rid of heavy metals. In fact, it doesn't really have a natural process to get rid of heavy metals. If you think about it, your body was designed to hold on to metals. It was never designed to get rid of metals. Your body was designed to absorb magnesium and hold on to it, absorb iron and hold on to it in the liver and a protein called ferritin and copper and cellular plasma, uh, cellular plasmin, and zinc and manganese and molybdenum and, and selenium, all those minerals that we think of as beneficial, um, they're metals. So your body wants to accumulate those from your nutrients. So if you start exposing it to arsenic and lead and mercury and cadmium and, and antimony and all those heavy metals, the body's not used to seeing those metals, so it inappropriately accumulates them and doesn't have a proper detoxification method. It doesn't know which one is good and bad. The body's just trying to collect those metals. So unfortunately, our bodies are really good at accumulating these heavy metals, and it takes a very specific process to get them out. So you will read online, if you Google it right now, heavy metal removal, you'll see all kinds of things like spirulina and methylation and glutathione and, and all these things to get out heavy metals. I will tell you that in order to get heavy metals out of your body for sure, you must do chelation and you must use the drugs in order to get them out. I have seen it in my patients, I've seen it myself, I've taken supplements for years and, and glutathione and methylation and everything that, that we do in the detox world. And when it came down to it, I still had mercury even after those years built up in my body. And it wasn't until I did the chelation process, I used DMPS, was, was I able to get it out in three months. In three months, I was able to get it out. So even if supplements are, are able to get it out, it's a much slower process. If you don't have access to someone who's knowledgeable in chelation how to do it, then by all means avoid it. But if you want to get metals out, if you believe metals are one of your problems, then first of all, get tested. But second of all, find a knowledgeable doctor who knows how to chelate safely because it's one of the few detoxification things that we do that can be dangerous if not done correctly. I will do a whole nother video on heavy metals, so uh, I'll try to stop there. The main thing I want to point out next is now that we've talked about the different varieties of toxins and the different categories of toxins, I want to briefly touch on how to detoxify these toxins. But the main thing I want to point out is, let me get out of the way, is that pretty much all of these toxins, all of them, the human ones, the mucosal surfaces, the mold, the chemicals, all of them are removed through these same detoxification pathways that I've listed down below here that I describe as a push and pull method. But notice heavy metals are all by themselves. In order to get heavy metals out, you must do chelation. So what we start with, to back up, back to, to reiterate, we start with the gut, we start with the sinuses, we have to clean out all these bad bacteria and bad fungus that are creating toxins because each one of these categories, you need to eliminate the source before you try to detoxify it. So in the back to our metaphor of bailing the water out of the boat, if you can plug some of these holes in the boat, it takes a whole lot less effort to bail if you've already plugged some of those holes. So restoring the human hormones, the, the, the detoxification process of the, of the hormones, balancing out the bad bacteria and fungus, getting rid of some of those bad guys that are creating toxins, getting, rid, getting out of the mold in order to not be exposed to any more mold toxins before you go down this pathway. Same thing over here eating organic foods, drinking clean water, limit your exposure to the environmental metals. Then once all those things are in place, then start the detoxification process. Then start bailing the water out of your boat. So to talk about this, this detoxification process very briefly, I'm gonna talk about a pull and a push mentality. So everyone knows that glutathione, most everyone knows that glutathione is your master antioxidant. It's listed right there. Glutathione, it's the magnet. It's the thing that grabs onto the toxin and, and holds onto it and carries it to the, the stool and the urine and the sweat in order to formally get rid of that, that toxin. And in order to create glutathione, you need methylation. And so methylation helps you make glutathione as well as detoxify those to get ready to be escorted by glutathione. This is what we call the pull mentality. As soon as something is released from a, a storage place, 
the liver has to detoxify it, that glutathione has to grab it like a magnet, and then it pulls it to the detox organ, whether it be um, sweat, stool, or um, urine. Um, the other way we can get things to detoxification is we can push them out. So the toxins we struggle with getting rid of, and as I talked about with mold or these adducts, these chemicals, these mold toxins, these bacterial toxins, they stick to our DNA, they stick to our cell walls. These are fat-soluble toxins. Water-soluble toxins are really easy to get rid of. You drink a water-soluble toxin, you can pee it out. It's really simple. Water-soluble toxins don't bother us that much. Fat-soluble toxins are very difficult to get rid of because they stick to our fat cells, they stick to our cell membranes, they stick to our brain, our heart, our liver, anything and everything. So in order to get rid of it, you have to make it a water-soluble um, toxin, which is glutathione, what glutathione does, or you have to eject it and get it to the liver so that the liver can dump it into the stool through the bile. So this process of, of getting it to the liver, we call the push method. So in order to get a toxin that's in your brain, your brain doesn't have an exhaust pipe, right? There's no brain urine or brain stool that comes out that if you wanna get a toxin out of the brain, you have to push it out. It's got to enter the circulation. It's gotta roam the body until it meets the liver. And in the liver, it goes to the detoxification phases in order to find that magnet, that pull to get it out of the system. So in our world, we're trying to push the toxins out and once they're pushed out, then we're trying to pull them to the de detoxification organs. Um, so the way we push things is we use oils and, and, and ways to break up our oils and new oils in order to get rid of these things or get them out of the organs they're in. So I'm going to list a few. Phosphatidylcholine or phospholipids, fish oils, butyrate, and of course, fasting. So we'll go into each of these categories in my future videos and in the specific ones. But the idea of detoxification is around pushing the toxins out and then pushing them out of their storage place and then pulling them to your detox organs, your blood, uh, urine, sweat, and, and stool. So this is the whole diagram of toxins and detoxification in a nutshell. In some of my future videos, I'll dive into each category to explain them in more detail. I hope this helps. Feel free to leave a comment, question. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks, guys.